Welcome to the channel. My name is Hall and I do product and travel review videos. Today we are covering the spot on GPS dog collar. This is actually the generation two. Um, so a couple things before we get started. This is the generation two. This is the generation one. I bought the generation one because when I was doing my research, it solved my problem of containing my Bernie's mountain dog named Vader. If you didn't see my review of this, uh, you can certainly go check it out, but we'll be covering a lot of the similar things in the Gen 2 video today. I'm telling you all this because I bought this one, did a review, it was pretty successful for my standards. That video led to, let me make sure that doesn't fall, spot on reaching out to me and saying, hey, we finished a Gen 2, would you be open to doing a review? So I did not pay for this collar. Um, they sent it to me to do this review, caveat, I'm not getting back end. I am not an associate with them. The reason I'm telling you all this is to tell you that this will be an honest review. I bought the Gen 1 because it solved my problem and I've had it for a couple of years now and I absolutely love it. A few caveats, which we'll get into those, but I'm not making anything on the back end. If people buy this, it's because they want to buy it or they watch my review for whatever points. I'm just letting you know, didn't buy the collar, but I'm also not getting anything in the back end. So this will be honest, this will be open and we'll talk about some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. So let's get into that. Okay, so like I said right before the bumper, I did make a video on the Gen 1. During that period of time with all with the views I got, I did have a bunch of comments and questions. I did get to use the spot on support through email quite a bit to get questions answered for some of the comments on my video. I'm telling you this because they were very good. They were very supportive. They got back to me usually within 24 hours. Um, so that, um, that using the support system for spot on was a great experience. I also had to use the warranty uh, system for the Gen 1 because I broke the charging port on the Gen 1, which you can see is right underneath that flap. Um, that has a little micro USB and that little prong in there broke off when I was trying to charge it and put the charging cable in. That's one of my main complaints with the Gen 1 is the charging. That charging port is, I think, a fragile point. And they solved that problem on the Gen 2, which we'll get into. I'm telling you that because I used the warranty as well and that was a very easy process. I sent them a couple pictures, explained what happened, and they sent me a new collar. So their customer support's pretty amazing and their customer support around the warranty is also very good. Um, so I wanted to let you know that. And the warranty for the Gen 2, this is a one year uh, warranty with a 45 day money back guarantee. So I'm letting you know because the process is easy. So don't, don't stress about that and their support is also very good. I hear something in the woods. <laughs> All right, so why would you look at something like this? I wanna talk a little bit specific about that because it is $1,500, so that is a little salty, um, but I think you get quite a bit for your money with a solution like this if this is what you're looking at getting. Um, one, you probably have a problem of your pet, your dog running out of the yard or you know not staying in a perimeter that you're looking for or you're looking for other solutions around that. Um, if you have a very large property and you're trying to cover it, um, maybe the in-ground solution isn't an option. That's kind of my scenario where for $1,500, I probably couldn't get an in-ground solution for the size of the property. Um, so that really wasn't an option for me, which is why I was looking at a GPS, which is when I picked up the Gen 1. Um, and you're looking... There's a deer in the woods. <laughs> This is live and this is happening right now. I'm gonna continue even though there's a deer literally right behind me. Hopefully it doesn't run into me. Um, so I did not expect that the deer kind of roam all around here, but <laughs> we have deer action during a video. Hopefully it runs behind me and gets on the video. Anyway, um, so just letting you know that, you know, this containment option is can cover a multitude of things. If you want to have containment at more than one location, this can also solve that problem for you as well. So. Important tips. I want to cover some important tips right out of the gate before, while you're thinking about possibly buying a GPS solution. There are multiple options out there. I looked at quite a few of them, um, but spot on really covered most of what I was looking for, for my specification. It's a baby deer and it's right there. <laughs> I've seen him, him or her, I'm not sure what it is, but I've seen uh, it quite a bit around my property. So hopefully you could hear that, but I'm not lying. There was a baby deer right there. Um, 
So uh, important tips, the collar, um, obviously put your, put your mind at ease, but you do have to train your pet, right? So training is the biggest part of this. You can't just make a fence, slap it on, let me slide over here a little bit. Slap it on because of the uh, the light. You can't just slap it on your pet and then set it and let it go because that's not going to work. You There is training. It's about a two week to 15 day, I think, evolution, uh, multiple 15 minute increments. Essentially what you're doing is getting your pet used to hearing the tones and the alerts to run away from the sound. So walking up towards the tone, hearing the beep, running away, congratulating, doing the same thing, repetitious, repetitious. Um, and that usually works within that two week time frame. So. Oh, Vader's right here too. <laughs> so Vader was one noise. The baby deer was the other noise. So Vader is, what are you doing, buddy? So yeah, there's a lot happening on this video so far. Um, so you must see the training. Uh, without the training, this is gonna be useless. So it's gonna be a waste of your time. Um, make sure you do the training and they have all kinds of guides if you're worried about the training. Uh, it's pretty easy though. The GPS antenna, which on this one, is shown by a little, get my face out of there. So it shows a little, this has to be on the back of the neck of your pet. So make sure that's facing uh, the back of the neck because it has to face the sky for pretty much the best result. So Vader's running around. Um, the GPS technology that they actually use for this is better than your cell phone. So realize that as well, that if you're using your cell phone to get around the world in your car or whatever that looks like, they're using better technology than that. So you can pretty much trust it. It's, 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 it's very good. Um, you need at least one, you need at least a half acre, um, to be able to use this because that half acre and up, and then the cell service plan is optional. So in the gen one, I didn't get the self service plan at all. I just used the collar and the fence. So I didn't have trackability uh, or anything like that on this one. They're giving me a two year free subscription. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like and what you're allowed to see. Um, but the app, for this new gen 2 even without the cell service is really incredible it's very good it's very cool and i can't wait to show you what it looks like okay so let's get into constructability gen 2 versus gen 1. so material it's like a you know waterproof neoprene you know type uh rubbery solution solution material this is the same material but this is way more stiff so the gen 1 it's thicker but doesn't have as much flexibility um, where the gen, this is, you know, way more flexible, pliable. Um, yeah, so just letting you know there. Adjusting size. So they come in small, medium, or large, um, and it's all around kind of the size of your dog and the next size, so you just kind of want to do a, a quick measurement. Um, the Dogs must weigh up to at least 15 pounds. So you have a, at least a half an acre on the size of your yard. And you want to make sure that the dog weighs at least 15 pounds. This is mostly because this is the largest because obviously my dog's 126 pounds. Um, but I'm sure the weight restriction on the dog is really around like, you know, the heftiness of even the smaller collar. Because, you know, there's a battery in here. There's a little GPS antenna. There's some other stuff going on. There's technology, all that fun stuff. Um, so they have to at least have a 15 pounds. The next size goes from 10 inch to 26 inch. Um, you want to fit the collar reasonably snug, but you can still fit two fingers between your dog's neck and the collar. That's kind of that's kind of the test for how tight you want it. Um, you can trim the excess the excess on the collar once you find the right size, and once your pet is obviously full grown. So you don't want to do that too early and trim it, and then they get too big. Um, so when you're adjusting the size, this is really super easy to do now um, it's kind of just you just pop this little you pop the little slider into a new hole the gen one this was my other complaint adjusting this thing was like was a torture uh you i had to use like pliers and everything because this is so stiff and the plastic was very very stiff so adjusting the size of this was horrible this i did in about three seconds uh, so having a more pliable material is also helping and this is a little bit more flexible this was really stiff and sturdy and it was absolutely horrible to change the size so uh, besides the charging that was another really irritating part of the gen 1 collar and they have solved that problem as well um, antenna like I talked about um, you want to keep that on your pets on the back of the neck um, and it's towards the sky because that gives you the best results um, there's no screen on the gen 2 and you may be like oh, what do you mean we're getting we're losing technology you're not losing technology and i'll tell you why but 
Um, you can see there's no screen there. On the Gen 1, you do have a screen, which is your main reading point uh, for activating the fence, um, letting you know that the fence saved. All that kind of stuff was all done on the collar. The new Gen 2, it's all done through the app, and the app is amazing, which we'll get into some of that. Um, I'm kind of glad there's no screen, a couple of reasons. I always had to clean the screen to be able to read some of the stuff because Vader gets into all kinds of really dumb stuff and gets everything dirty, so I don't have to worry about that so much with this one. Um, another thing, the bands are replaceable on the Gen 2. They were not replaceable on the Gen 1, which was a little worrying because if they would break or anything, you'd have to get a whole new collar. Now, the main parts that they're, you're super worried about that has all the tech in it, uh, they stay and you just replace the actual size. So if you do cut this too early and your dog's neck gets a little bit bigger, you can just replace this. So that's, that's really great. You couldn't replace it on, on the Gen 1. No charging port. There is no charging port per se on the Gen 2. You actually have, you can see it there, you have those little contact prongs. So it now sits in a saddle to charge where, like I showed you on the Gen 1, it was an actual, you know, plug in like your phone. And that was a huge flaw for me because that's actually what it ended up breaking that I had to get a, uh, a warranty, uh, a new one for. So now it goes into a charging base, which will show you all that. Um, and it, it flashes green when it's charging. It goes solid green when it's charged. It takes around 90 to 120 minutes for full charge. Um, like I said, the charging is through connection points. So if your collar's not charging, just make sure you clean those because you know they are facing your dog. They could get a little dirty and make sure the, the prongs on the actual saddle are also clean. But if it's not charging, it's probably because these prongs are a little bit dirty. I have, uh, I have headphones that get a little bit wonky like that as well. Um, so just make sure you keep them clean. Uh, the collar is also IP67 waterproof rating. Pretty much what it means is you can your dog can go in water and this there's no problem for this thing. So if you have a property that has a pond or a creek, you can actually set the boundaries with the water inside of it. Uh, you don't have to worry about your dog getting electrocuted or anything. This thing's fully waterproof, um, which is great. And it's also made in the USA. Yay, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, so let's talk about the spot on technology. Um, so it's Bluetooth connected. So you connect the uh, collar to your phone via Bluetooth and then you can just follow the in-app instructions for doing all the other stuff. The app is once again incredible and I'll, I'll talk more about that. Battery life, it's um, 18 hours in contain mode and 12 hours if you're doing track mode. So if you're constantly keeping the tracking on for this thing, it only lasts 12 hours. If you're doing just contain with inside of a fence, it'll last 18 hours. So really let them out for the day and then once you're ready to bring them in for the night or whatever that looks like, you can just throw it on the charger. Um, you don't have to turn it off and throw it on the charger. That's the other thing. You always want to keep it on and you want to keep kind of your fence active so you don't have to keep reactivating the fence. You just throw it on the charger. Just make sure that where you're charging is within the perimeter so your dog's not getting alerted uh, that it's going out of the boundary when you're bringing the pet into either your home, barn, whatever that looks like. Okay, fences, right? This is what we're here. Containment, let's talk about fences. Uh, making the fences on the Gen 1 was easy, but... Um, kind of guessing, right? You just, it would say you're good. You would just be looking at the screen on the fence and you kind of following the instructions and you would walk. I think I only had to do my first fence ever, maybe twice, cause it didn't work the first time. Um, and that was a little bit, not frustrating, but it was just a little confusing at times. Um, like I said, the, the screen on the collar kind of told you everything and then you tested it just to make sure. Um, so making fences on this one, same concept where you're walking is one of the options, but everything you can see on the app on your phone. So as you're walking, it's actually showing you uh, making the map and we'll dive more and more into that. Um, it's really cool though. Uh, you can save multiple fences. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 20. So I wanna talk about that, right? This, this is one of the main reasons I bought the Gen 1 is being having the ability to save 10 different options and whether that's around your house, here comes Vader, um, whether that's around your house or if you go somewhere, if you have a vacation house, or you're going vacationing, you take your pet with you, you're going to the dog park, you wanna make sure they don't run out or if there's no fence, whatever, going to a park. Like you can make a, a an ad hoc perimeter pretty much anywhere you go, as long as it's not over the, uh, if you, as long as you have some save options still available. Um, so like if you're going to, you know, 
family members or whatever, or a family member watches your pet during the day, you can make a fence at their house and then they still can have the ease of watching your pet and your pet can still kind of do its thing. Um, so, you know, with the different fences, realize you will have to have some additional training at each one of the locations where you have a fence, which is really same training, just walking up to the edge, hearing the alerts, running away, congratulating and doing that repetition. Um, minimum property, like we said, is at least a half acre. You want to have at least 80 feet minimum between your narrowest points. So when you're making your fence, you want to make sure that you have at least 80 feet. Um, you want to have at least minimum 15 feet feet from roads or hazards. So you want to stay, you want to make sure you have 15 feet in away from either a road or any type of hazard while still keeping the 80 feet minimum of the narrowest point. Uh, minimum 30 feet between fence boundary and a building or a house. So you want to stay outside your walls of your house as at least 30 feet. Um, you want to keep your house or where you're charging or where your pet is going to be some of the time inside the fence scenario so that they don't get alerts um, when they're, when you're bringing them in. So alert boundary zone, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, 10 feet, you'll get a sound from the boundary. Around five feet, that's considered the warning zone. You'll, you'll get a different tone. And then once you're at the boundary or over the boundary, you'll get a vibrate or a static if you have it on. You do not have to keep the static on. You do not have to put it on. You can just use the vibration and you can still train your pet under the vibration setting alone. So my property line is right there. And I'm, you know, more, a little bit more than 10 feet away. And I want to show you as I get closer kind of how the alert tones um, work for the collar. All right, so I'm in the same spot I just was. I want to kind of show you how this alerts. So I'm a little bit more than 10 feet away as I just showed you. Let's go ahead and walk towards. So this is the first alert zone. As you can see, it's not really doing anything. I'm gonna keep walking forward to get a different tone. Okay, so I'm like within five feet of the boundary here. And that is the other warning tone that you train to run away. And then I'm gonna walk and it should vibrate the color. Yeah. So I'm now right on the line, it's vibrating the collar. Um, and then allow for 10 feet of drift. So wherever you put your line, realize that you could potentially, because of the GPS satellites, have 10 feet of drift. It's usually under that for me. Um, for all the years I've had it, the drift doesn't seem to be, hasn't been over the 10 feet. I've never been like, holy crap, Vader's kind of going wherever he wants. I didn't realize where the line was. It's It's been reasonably tight, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. And if you stay within 15 feet of roads or hazards, that's not too much of an issue. Uh, another cool, interesting thing, you can do overlapping fences, which apparently is pretty unique for GPS dog collars, um, which essentially means that you can have similar points within the same round. So for instance, I have a fence that goes just around my house, and then I have a fence that goes around my entire property. Those points, which the GPS puts about every five feet, they actually could have similar points, even though they're two different safe fences. There's, from what I understand as of right now, making this video, they are the only one that allows to have overlapping fences because when they save the multiple fences, you know, they can have the same posts essentially. And I guess that screws up a lot of these types of things where it doesn't for this one, it works fine. Okay, let's talk about making a fence. So forest mode is always on. On the Gen 1, you actually had to turn forest mode on. Um, for this one, it is on. It actually shows you in the app. It's really easy to see. Um, and forest mode essentially is just, if you are trying to put a fence where there's a lot of cover, a lot of trees, you're in some heavy brush, it's cloudy, whatever that looks like, it allows you to have a, 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 a higher signal and a, a higher rate of success. Um, I use forest mode pretty much the entire time in Gen 1, which is what I'm hearing. They heard that from a lot of people and they just made it on on the Gen 2 and you actually have to go turn it off instead of the other way around. Um, so when you're making a fence, you walk the perimeter just like you did on the Gen 1 and I'll show you a little bit of that. Um, you can make a quick fence from the app, um, which really is just like a circle. You can like stand in a point and you can tell the radius of the circle and it'll show you on the map how, how far out it goes and if there's anything. It's like using Google Maps essentially. Um, to look at where you are from a, a top down. You can walk the perimeter and right now they are um, they are trialing 
the ability to adjust your fence on the app. So as you make your perimeter, um, you'll then, or they're testing right now to then release in the future that you can then go to your map on the app and you can move points out or adjust the points from the fence. So you can make a quick one and then you could adjust it on your phone. You could walk the perimeter and if you don't like it, you could adjust on your phone or you could walk the perimeter. If you don't like it, delete it and walk the perimeter again. The Gen 1, you could only just walk the perimeter. There was not all these adjustments that you could do, which is pretty cool. There's Vader, he's in the background. <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, so that's who I'm trying to contain. And I have both of his collars, which is why he walked down through the woods. As you can tell, like I said before, he knows when he doesn't have his collar on and he goes into areas where I don't want him because now he's covered in all kinds of things I have to brush out of him. So that's why you use this. Um, let's see. Oh, the pause resume. So pause resume also existed on Gen 1. Essentially what that means is um, you can be walking your perimeter, you can stop, you can hit pause, and then you can walk to another location of your yard, and then you can hit resume, and it snaps a straight line between those two. So you're going to say, when would I want to do that? For instance, I have a steep hill um, to get down from the upper yard to the lower yard. I don't obviously want to walk that and walk through the woods. So what I do is I stop up at the top yard, and I walk down the path to the to the bottom one, and I snap the line. Now, why do I do that? Because I want him to be able to use the path where if I walk along the path, the width isn't 10 feet and he wouldn't be able, he would get scared not do it because of, the, because of the sound. So if you have instances like that or you have water, you can pause on one side of the pond, go to the other side, hit resume, snap the line right across the pond and they will still be able to use the pond. So I love the pause resume function. I use it all the time. Okay, so that's everything for fences. Once again, if you have any questions on the video, certainly leave comments below. I answer all of my comments. Um, let's talk about cellular plans. So I did not have the cellular plan on Gen 1. I'm pretty sure I said that. Um, you don't need the cellular plan to create, activate, or maintain your fences. So the app is still very good even without the cellular plan. So you can still spend the $1,500 and then not spend any more money and still get a great product and you can still maintain your fences and all that fun stuff. You just won't be able to do some of the things and we'll talk about that. Um, like I said, I didn't have the cell service. They are giving me two years of free service so I can test that out. Uh, once again, the GPS tech is more accurate than, it's more accurate than the uh, cell phone. So why, did, why would you get the cell phone plan? It shows you battery updates, um, escape notifications, and tracking. So you can track your pet inside of your containment. It'll give you auto breach alerts, and it'll give you real time tracking. He's getting so dirty. Uh, it'll give you real time tracking if they get out of your boundaries. So the tracking is, you know, it'll be inside your fence, but if they get out, it'll give you constant real time updates of where your pet's going if they do get out of the boundaries. So that's pretty crazy. Um, you can get a free 90 day trial if you wanna try the cell service to see if you like it. Um, you can cancel at any time, there's no contract. So if you wanna try it, if you do the 90 days, you like it, you wanna keep using it, but then you wanna stop using it, that's fine, there's no contract. Um, it is $9.95 a month. For one year, you can get it for $70.95 a month. And if you pay for two years, sorry, I'm trying to stay out of the light. Let me swing you over here. Um, it, two years, it's $5.95 a month. So obviously, the longer you pay, the cheaper it is. Um, okay, the last thing I want to talk about is I'm not the only one that watches my dog. So when I'm at work, my wife's at home, and then she's also obviously trying to keep track of Vader. Um, so you can invite family members and other people into your app features and your collar settings, right? So once you actually register, register your collar with the phone, which is just scanning a QR code, which is really easy, um, you can, I can send the invite to my wife. It goes to her email, she downloads the app and then it, it sets up for her. So you can set them as an owner or you can set them as just like a, 
view only almost like a document so they wouldn't be able to like change static corrections or things like that or change plans the owners you know they would get kind of the same rights you currently have as an owner so realize that you can invite other people it's not just you it wouldn't just go to your phone it would also alert another person so if you're not at home or you're flying or whatever that looks like and something happens they would still be able to deal with the situation so um overall the things I really was annoyed about with the Gen 1 was adjusting the size was totally frustrating to me. Not being being worried that the uh, the bands would break and I'd have to get a whole new collar. They've, they've solved that problem by giving you the ability to replace uh, the actual collar pieces, which is great, the bands. Um, the charge port on Gen 1, really frustrating to me that I had actually used the warranty to get a new one. It is now the contact ports inside of a charging base, so they solved that problem. I did not have the cell service, so I can't compare that. Um, the constructability of the first one was great. I didn't have any issues just outside of the charge port. This seems like it's just as good or maybe even better. The waterproof function, the same, the, the Gen 1 was waterproof. Not having the screen, really like on this because all the tech was kind of in the collar in the last one the app on the new one is incredible which you will see as you will have seen as i've dropped all those clips in um just really really impressed with the setup of the fencing uh the tracking ability the cell phone service um the the make the construction fixing the little things that were wrong with the gen one because there wasn't a whole lot wrong with the gen one i used it literally for like two years straight and really had no issue outside of the charging port and once i got his size adjusted like i didn't really have to adjust the size that much so it wasn't a total hang up but they fixed all those small things and you have replacement parts now if something goes wrong just i'm really happy i'm really happy with this gen 2 and the app's incredible the app is really good they did a lot of work on it you can tell it's easy to maneuver it's concise it's simple yeah i'm just really impressed so that is my review of the spot on GPS dog collar, Gen 2 against the Gen 1, the changes, what I like, what I don't like. Uh, once again, if you have any questions on the specific collar, why I chose it, what it looks like, what it needs to do, if I forgot anything, I apologize, but certainly reach out to me and I'm sure I'll be able to get, your, get the answer for you. So that is it and I will catch you on the next video. Thanks.